He's ready. And it's about a minute till, but I think we'll call the meeting to order. And roll call, please. Mayor Crawford. Here. Commissioner Blanchard. Here. Commissioner Davis. Commissioner Hodges. Here. Commissioner Ryan. Here. Okay, administration 3.1. Or maybe we better do a. <laughs> we be, we be, I'm out of order here. Let's do our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item 3.1. Item 3.1, resolution number 17-7499, certifying legal authority to apply for the 2017 Kansas Small Cities Community Development Block Grant Program from the Kansas Department of Commerce and authorizing the mayor to sign and submit such an application. Okay. okay Madam Mr. Mayor, Scray. just as a, I just want to make the everybody aware that I do serve on the board at uh, North Central Regional Planning Commission as part of my duties on this commission. So just so everyone's aware of that. Okay. Mr. Scragg. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. And I would particularly want to thank you for meeting in special session to consider this item. I'll address how it is that we ended up meeting today in a little bit. But as you may recall, on September 25th, you took some preliminary action. You passed a resolution identifying uh, the property at 356 North Santa Fe as uh, being blighted as it relates to the, uh, the grant program that we're considering, as well as being part of the downtown. And that, that then was a preliminary indication to the owners and, uh, of the property that it was worth their while to proceed with uh, preparing plans that would support a grant application, which is what's on our agenda today. So Beaverly Architects uh, purchased the building located at 356 South Santa Fe, and with the assistance of Doug McKinney, the director of North Central Regional Planning Commission, and Phil Klima, they've uh, worked through the uh, grant program, uh, the Kansas Small Cities Community Development Block Grant Program, to prepare an application. Having said that, that application is to be submitted by the city of Salina. And so that's why you're here today is to take that final step in terms of considering it and submitting that application. Uh, when we met on the 25th, I explained the, the grant program and um, I won't go into great detail today, but suffice it to say that it, it is a competitive grant application that is considered uh, on a 100 point scale. Uh, 20 points are for the efforts of the community to revitalize the downtown commercial district. 25 points are the scope of work on the building and its impact on the commercial district. 20 points are on the financial capacity and business experience of the owner-operator. 25 points are on the business plan for reuse of the building. And 10 points are the readiness to proceed with the project. And so uh, the applicants have, have uh, prepared their, their plans and budget and, and provided us with the documentation necessary to submit the grant application. With respect to why we're meeting today, um, we were proceeding, uh, we have a number of publication requirements to meet, both publication of a public hearing uh, in advance as well as then um, conducting the public hearing uh, far enough in advance of the application deadline. And so there were, uh, were varying dates uh, cited in the uh, documentation that we were relying on. I proceeded on the three-day uh, date that was on page five of the document. and. Uh, Doug pointed out to me there's a 15-day date uh, elsewhere in the document, and so we felt we needed to adhere to the 15-day date. So that's why we found ourselves here, a combination of uh, when we could get something published in this line of journal and next Monday not falling within that 15 days left us with uh, today or tomorrow as our two options. So I thank you for, for meeting uh, in uh, short order. Uh, in summary, the, the total project cost is estimated to be $340,363 with the application for uh, 250000 of that to be CDBG grant funded and $90,363 of that to be funded by uh, Beebley Architects or the project owners. Uh, that equates to 26.5%, which meets the grant uh, program in terms of local uh, match and uh, 
I've detailed there the, the scope of work that they have in mind. Um, they may want to address you in terms of the building and their intentions, but suffice it to say, uh, site improvements, exterior renovations, interior renovation, and ultimately Beaverly Architects uh, intends to, to move their offices there and then I believe have one additional office available uh, for lease. Um, I think there's pictures attached to, to uh, the report. They can, you can see the condition of the building and I think it's exciting that they've taken on this project and what it could turn out to be. Uh, with respect to our uh, strategic planning goals, we've identified that this action would be uh, consistent with the goals that Salina be exciting to live in and thriving economically and socially, that it be clean, attractive, and inviting, that it be a place <laughs> with a quality of life that appeals to residents and visitors, that it be attractive and well-maintained, that, that we be environmentally conscious, and that downtown Salina be a thriving and vibrant place. Uh, additionally, uh, it would be uh, consistent with our goal to be respectful of our heritage. With respect to the fiscal note, uh, we're endorsing the application, but the match is provided by the, the project owner, so there's no fiscal impact to the city of Salina directly. And uh, we've only identified two options for your consideration. One would be to approve the resolution, uh, authorizing, uh, indicating our legal authority and authorizing the mayor to uh, submit the application. In light of the timeline, we don't really have time to postpone consideration, so the only other option that leaves you with is to decline the resolution, uh, which would leave us uh, ineligible and not applying for the grant at this time. I know that Ken Beaverly is here uh, on behalf of the project and, and Doug McKinney's here on behalf of North Central Regional Planning. They may wish to address you and I'm certain they can answer any questions that you might have. So. Mr. Beaverly, sir, like to give us a little more information? Sure. Um, my name is Ken Beaverly. Um, there's one uh, uh, small thing. Um, the Beaverly Architects is the, um, is the owner in addition to uh, uh, Johnny Adam. Uh, Johnny Adam and, um, and my brother and I formed a um, partnership and now are the, um, uh, involved in that, this project. Uh, one other thing, the, um, the office, uh, or the depot that we're going to remodel will have um, four offices. Uh, we, have, we have at least three of them and we have one that uh, we hope to lease very, very soon. But, um, I'm here to answer any questions and um, uh, feel free to ask me anything. I, I just want to congratulate you just on taking on this significant, it's a significant historical building, there's no doubt about it, and it just would be great to see it. Well, interesting story. Uh, we uh, were in partnership with a with a architectural firm from um, Kansas City, and they they came into so into town last week, and we're driving down Santa Fe, and uh, um, there were three of them, and they came up to our office, and uh, we told them we were moving, and uh, they said, well. Uh, they drove by the steeple that um, they passed. It'd be a perfect place for an architectural <laughs> office. I said, "Well, that's where we're moving." So uh, we have their blessing. So we're excited yeah. about that. Great, so. great questions. Um, what does the timeline look like? I'm excited to see this uh, funded and finished. Well, we'd like to see it happen yesterday, but uh, what, uh, as soon as the Doug will probably be able to go into that. But uh, we intend to start construction uh, as soon as possible at, uh, with a occupancy date of hopefully um, uh, late spring of next year or uh, the middle of the year. Sooner maybe, it all depends. So, well, I too would, yeah, I too would like to thank you and to your partners, Johnny, and of course to Doug McKinney and Phil Klima for all working together to um, rescue this local landmark. And I'm just very excited that you've decided to, to, you know, to put your money where your passion is and where our community um, needs to do some preservation. So thank you to all of you, and I just thank wish you. you all the best. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? No, I just have a quick uh, question for Mr. McKinney, but I, I'll I'll concur with their thoughts and, and that uh, really appreciate that you you're taking on a, a heritage project and and really I think adding to. The richness of downtown. Very good, thank you. But uh, Mr. McKinney, I do have a uh, a quick question on this, and that when we go through the scoring process on this thing, and then we look at the past, uh, am I right? The last CBDG grant we got in Salina was 2012. You had a housing rehabilitation project, mostly that Indian Hills, kind of uh, south of Crawford. It was certainly west of of Broadway okay. area. And maybe 15 houses, as I recall. Okay, from a, fr from uh, I mean the, the criteria, the judging criteria look like stacks up really favorably for this project. 
Um, hate to have you handicap this, but is there relative confidence that this will well, be funded? Well, Mike and I were just talking about that. We are relatively confident in that Commerce, the deadline is December 1st. Commerce has had inquiries about the program, but because of the complexities, the challenges, uh, we can, we've been talking for almost a year now. I was amazed at first meeting with Gary Hobby and with John uh, from the city. It was January of last year to dialogue how it can happen. Yes, there is this program again. And Commerce has had a few of those dialogues. We probably talked, you met with them in Newton. And a staff member of ours was also there, Nicole. But we had maybe three or four conversations with them, and they haven't had any others go forward. And that's why we're somewhat optimistic by meeting all of these check boxes that the complication of the program. And it, it really is a nice project that it will suffice. It will fill that void. They want to keep it around because it is unique, but if they don't get interest applications, then they won't. And last year they didn't, 2016. So 17 is sort of a make or break year for them to keep things going in that regard. Okay. Did we, had we made a, any applications that were denied between uh, now and I believe the assurance partners the project assurance is, partners is probably the one okay, you're thinking of. And the biggest reason for that, that Commerce, we helped with Phil and with assurance partners in support of that, but Commerce said, well, in reality, it's almost the same as the park project that was proposed. Salina has a lot of parks. Commerce said there are community. We only have so many dollars. There are communities out there that only have one park, like Gypsum or Saria. Yeah. We're going to help them. So Salina, we're sorry, but that one park out of your 30 parks, we're not going to assist. Well, in the case of Assurance Partners, they had already started some work and doings, and Commerce said, well, it looks like you're proceeding without us. And um, our 250000 mm -hmm. maybe you don't need for a $2 million project. So that's what their logic was or reasoning for that. And I Doug, think if I recall correctly, there were other competitive applications yeah. that got funded that year. We they, had Beloit and Concordia the same year. They're along the same lines. They're not depots, but they have this ownership group that's bought the property that would like to see it improved and then have other businesses inside those structures. And they're both thriving buildings today. In fact, in Beloit's case, that could have gone to the wrecking ball if it hadn't been approved through the program because of a storm that happened that later that fall. But yeah, those were competing with the Salina one that same time. And I think Commerce could have done all three because Beloit and Concordia were the only two awarded. And they have said they would award three in a year. But since that time, which is about 13, 2013, they've had at least Hayes House and Council Grove, a furniture repair and uh, sort of emporium facility out in Plainville, downtown Plainville, and Dodge City, the old city hall, which is now a, uh, a distillery, a brewery kind of brew house. And I know there's at least one other one that I've forgotten that have been awarded, but it's about one or two per year, except for last year and this year so far, but 14 and 15. Okay. What, <clears throat> what I do want to say, if there's time yet on the calendar schedule, it's appreciation for Salina, the city commission, the staff taking their time, because you've had some staff voids. But for working with this kind of endeavor, with what I call a historic review, a review of code compliance, which is important, that figures right into these kinds of projects. And for, oh, I, I don't know, I call it encouragement of us, your participation with us as an organization. Because in reality, we do a lot of things behind the scenes, a lot of things that are elsewhere, and this is more public, more involved with a maybe a somewhat profile kind of project. And that's what dues payments are going for, whether it is a Syria or a Salina or someplace far away. And of course, you know from past experience that if we're helping Culver, which is 12 miles, 22 miles, something like that northwest, then we're helping Salina because everybody from Culver works or shops down here. Same thing if we're helping Washington or Clay County because of all the interactions with other facilities. And the strategic doing last Wednesday pointed a lot of that out. I, I don't know how many tables there were full of people, maybe six, seven, five, but 
almost every table shouted something in regards to working together more. And it's in Saline County or Salina even, but in multiple counties outside of that. And that's what we consider these, these fellas and the other services provided through this structure that's trying to be saved. They're working not just in Salina, but they're working in places that we don't know the zip codes, they're so far away. And that's good because they're exporting that service and that process and it's very beneficial. We do have what I call some preliminary renderings, uh, black and white, but we could show those to you or you can look at them afterwards. We didn't include them in the big packet there. And we have a couple more things to finish up in the big packet related to kind of embellishing or planning things out further, but they're more narrative type items, so more nitty gritty. But everything else is in there and we're, we're optimistic anyhow because of the timing that's worked out. And, and ever since that emergency aid food bank project, uh, for whatever reason, HUD said commerce in Kansas or Iowa, Nebraska, 15 days. Have that deadline notice in your local hearings. That way, if there is John Q. Public that wants to comment, then you can make changes in time. The old rule was three days, but I don't know why they didn't take it out of that, <laughs> that little sentence right there. Fine print. It's a complicated program. We're glad it's there, but we can help. We've done so many of these kinds of projects over the course of 43 years, 44 years of organization work. But it's just, there's a lot of strings to it, a lot of entanglements. So any other thoughts, questions, wonders? You do, you do such good work up there. Around, around here, all, yep. I should say around here. Uh, I just remember it going up there for yep, so many did. years. Yep. <clears throat> I, and in those days, we may have not had meetings down in Salina very much. I don't think you so. did. It's pretty much. Yeah, we move it around four or five times a year. Yeah. So. How's John doing? Is John? Well, just not giving too many details, but he just has aches and pains. Yeah. And, oh, but I, he's tell getting, him I do too. He's getting through them, yeah. <laughs> he has tools to help him. And he was fixed up not long ago down here in Salina. Oh, I think okay. it was Salina Regional. Good. Good. And just to reiterate that, K-State football last Saturday wasn't the best game in the world, but I listened on the radio and the halftime program was Salina Regional Health Center, well, the halftime dialogue. And he talked about how much it's important to support, maintain folks from far away because Salina Regional is counting on that for 35, 40% of their traffic, right. whether it's influenza or heart surgeries. But right. So I mean, folks get it, but it's good. Good to keep working together. It's so. good. It's right. Uh, any public, com and commissioners have any other questions? Public comment, public comment. Okay, bring it back to the commission for action. Madam Mayor, I would move that we approve a resolution certifying legal authority to apply for the 2017 Kansas Small Cities Community Development Block Grant Program from the Kansas Department of Commerce and authorizing the mayor to sign and submit such an application. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 177483. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Is there any other business before the board? If we not, adjourn. Okay. Second. There a second. All right. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.